Welcome to the Investor Coaching TV show. I'm Paul Winkler, your host. We talk about, of course, the world of money and investing and educate you as an investor. A lot of voices out there that can take you down the wrong path when it comes to investing, and they may be well-meaning. We're going to talk about some of that today. We're going to talk about how your emotions and your instincts can really trash your investment her, your, your future, I mean, really, when it comes down to it, because we tend to make decisions from the wrong parts of our brain. So we're going to do a little brain surgery today on you and talk a little bit about how you can fix those that stinking thinking, as we call it, in the investing world. Now, we're also going to talk about today something that I think is very, very important for investors to understand, and that is fear and overcoming your fears when it comes to the stock market. Because let's face it, as you get older, it gets scarier, especially when it comes to investing, because we fear that which we don't understand. So let's talk about how do we overcome the fear of market risk. I think it's going to be important to just pay attention to some of these numbers here that I'm going to talk about. Now, one of the things that I want to point out here is that let's say if I don't invest in the stock market, by definition, I'm investing in fixed income investments like bonds and T-bills and CDs and you know fixed annuities and all of the things that you're hearing an awful lot about from people that are selling these investment products right now. Well, an example right here is let's say we had somebody with a million dollar portfolio. You don't have to focus on all the little numbers on this chart, but I just want you to get the idea right here. Let's say if I had a million dollar portfolio and I'm going to take a 5% distribution. Sometimes you'll hear products that have 5% guarantee. Well, you know, I can stick my money under a mattress and get 5% for 20 years. But let's just take a look at what happens if I put it in a typical CD or fixed rate investment right now. If I put $50,000 and I took an income and I increased it for inflation, let's just go back and say we increased it for inflation over time, how long would it take me to literally run my portfolio into the ground? Will it take about 15, 16 years? That's it. No more money. You're done if you have an inflation increase. Well, I don't know how, how old you are, but 15 to 16 years isn't too long to end up with no money. What happens if you're alive after that? Well, you're out of luck. You're basically having to go into debt, if you can get it, in order to support your lifestyle at point, that point in time. Now, a couple things to keep in mind. This is just using, number one, a 5% distribution to start with and a 4% inflation rate and an interest rate or a rate of return of about 1%, which is about what CDs are paying right now. But what I want you to keep in mind is that U.S. medical spending almost doubled in the last decade according to government statistics. In other words, think about it. As you get older, what are you relying on more? What are you spending more money for? Well, your medical spending because your body's starting to break down. And that inflation rate is actually higher than what it is in other areas. Very important and very scary for a senior. Another thing to keep in mind is that the inflation rate for services is generally higher than that for manufactured goods. Well, as you get older, what you tend to do is you stop buying stuff. You stop buying washing machines and cars. You don't buy them as, in as much bulk as you used to when you were younger. You tend to buy more services as you age, and the inflation rate for services is actually higher. So basically what I'm saying to you here, folks, is that the problem could be even worse than what I'm showing you right here. Now, think about it this way as well. Back in 1926, let's say if I were able to invest a dollar in small U.S. stocks, those small U.S. stocks would be worth about $15,000 today. Large U.S. stocks, about $3,000. But fixed rate investments, $21. It doesn't really give us a fighting chance to outpace inflation when it really gets down to it. Yeah, you have to put up with the ups and downs along the way, but the issue is, is that what we have is this great vehicle for protecting us against that inflation risk in the difference between that $15,000 and that $21 right there. Now. I'm going to give you a textbook concept. I'm taking a course and reading the textbook. It was a course I'd already taken many, many years ago. And they said, ah, in order to get this new degree, Paul, you've got to take the course over again. I was like, ugh, 
But, you know, I, I'm actually happy I did because there are a lot of really cool concepts, including this one that I want to show you that was in the textbook. They gave the example of somebody had a portfolio value of a million dollars. Now, let's say that they were going to withdraw $50,000, and the asset mix was kind of aggressive, actually. They used a 70%, 75% stock mix in the textbook with a 25% cash position. Now, by the way, this was something that they said, this is not something that you really do. They're using it as a way to help you understand how you can overcome some of this worry about the stock market. And what they did, what I thought was kind of ingenious, they said if stocks go up, then what you're going to do is you're going to sell enough of your stocks in order to withdraw $50,000. So if your stocks go up, let's say they go up, let's say 10%. That's the example they used in the textbook. So I got $750,000 in stocks, right? They go up 10%. Now I've got a $75,000 gain, right? Seven is 10% of $750,000. Now I take my $50,000 from that $75,000 worth of gain. Makes sense? Now they said if they go down, then you just pull your income from the cash. That's where you're going to pull it from because the stocks are lower, but the cash, remember, is $250,000 of your million dollar portfolio. So I pull the $50,000 from the cash and then I replenish the cash when the stock market goes back up. And it's pretty much that simple. You think about it, the stocks would have to go down for five years straight to deplete my cash position. You think about that. Has that ever happened? And as they pointed out in the text, it's an event that has never occurred in our modern era. When can we even look back and see anything similar to what I'm talking about here? Well, we'd actually have to go back to the Great Depression, back in the 1930s. And let's take a look at that period of time, because I think you may find this interesting when we look at the numbers. If we look back at the Great Depression, 1929 is, of course, when the stock market started to go down. Then, of course, the market went down again in 1930. It went down in 1931, and it went down in 1932, four years in a row. Now, remember, I had a five-year slush fund with all of that money being in cash. But what happened subsequent to that four-year downturn? That's where it gets interesting. If we look at stocks, we see that 1933, we had a 56% return in a total market portfolio, according to Fama French, to academics, their data in the stock market. A total market portfolio went up 56%. Pretty nice recovery. 1934, 4.6% return. 1935, another 44% return. And 1936, we're in the depths of the Great Depression here, folks. 1936, 32% return. So in essence, what we're seeing here is a pretty decent recovery when it gets down to it. Now, here's the reality. You got to consider other things. This is not a methodology for taking income. It's not far off of a good methodology for taking income. But here are some other considerations that I want you to think about when taking an income. You got to think about what's my desire to leave a legacy. You know, I can't spend down my assets or don't want to if I want to leave, leave a legacy. So I may change my methodology for taking an income based on whether I want to leave a legacy or not. Leave something in inheritance, so to speak for the coming generation. I also have to consider health considerations. You know, how healthy or how sick am I? You know, it may, it may change how I actually take an income from my portfolio. What other assets do I have? Do I have real estate assets? Do I have other things that I can take an income from during those down market years? What's my general confidence level? You know, some people, if they, they can be more aggressive because they might just go back to work if stock markets don't do very well and they may just jump back and work a little bit more. What's my general confidence level in my ability and my ability to earn an income? Another thing we think about when it comes to how to take an income from your portfolio in retirement is the account types, the distribution order. In other words, I'm going to take a different level of income or a different risk level in non-qualified or taxable accounts versus 
qualified accounts or retirement accounts. You know, I may change the dist distribution order and when I take income from these various accounts. And this is all, these are all planning considerations that you should be sitting down with a qualified planner and talking about or someone like ourselves that we, this is the type of work that we do. So I thought you might find that interesting. Don't worry about the stock market quite as much because there are all kinds of strategies that you can employ to reduce your risk as an investor going forward. But remember, there are lots of different types of risk and we need to balance them. We're going to talk about that more right after this break on the Investor Coaching TV show. Stay tuned.